Once there was, and once there was not. Come gather around for a story, and it will not be just any story. This will be a story about the mightiest of the Aesir. I do not talk about Freya. I do not talk, nor speak of Thor. Neither Thor or Frey. I speak of the Alvado. I speak of the Wanderer, the Shepherd of the Lost, the One-Eyed, the Hangman. He who desires wisdom above anything else. Let me speak of him. One day, Odin was sitting in his throne. He was gazing upon Midgard, seeing everything that happened down below. And then his ravens, Hugin and Moon, returned from their flight around the nine worlds. And as they did every day, they told him all the news from all the corners of the world. One thing among their news stood out. They had heard laughter. Laughter. And now laughter is not an unusual thing to hear. But the source of this laughter was quite unusual indeed. The source of this laughter had been no else. But the mighty norms who live at the roots of the Yggdrasi. Odin found this very, very, very strange. So he called to himself his horse Sleipnir. And on this horse he traveled down to the roots. He traveled for nine days and nine nights to arrive at the lair of the Norns. And the Norns are the three wise ladies who spin the web of fate are oh, weird. And they were laughing. All three of them. And when Odin approached them, they were still doing so. And he asked them, how can you laugh when you are doing the most important job in the nine worlds, connecting faith? And they answered Odin, faith is exactly the source of our laughter. Faith is such a beauty to behold. Odin was amazed. What power and wisdom must one possess to be able to laugh at such a serious thing as faith? And from that moment on he wanted nothing else but to possess the same strength and power. So. He asked the Norns how he could too laugh of faith. They looked at one another and they spoke the following verse. He who desires runes, a path must he take to face his sea of swords and leave himself in its wake. Having said that, they returned silently to their work. Their laughter now ceased. And Odin stood there puzzled. Sea of swords. Himself in its wake. What a strange riddle. He called again Sleipnir, traveled back to Asgard, and there he thought about it. He thought long and hard. He was even going so far as to ask Loki, the mischievous, smart, untrustworthy, but clever god to help him solve the riddle, but he could not, he could not. So when hope seemed to fade and Odin knew he was not going to possess this power that the Norns has told him about, he was sitting in his throne again watching Midgard. 
And as he peered down, he cut himself on his spear. And one drop of blood fell down to the ground. And he looked at it. And then he knew. He knew what he had to do. Odin knew what he had to do and the answer to the riddle had been so simple that he now questioned his own sanity that he had not seen it before again he called to himself his whole slide near and he started traveling again but now not downwards but upwards on the great evergreen tree as high as he could go higher than the stags who eat from its leaves And there, on the highest branch of the Yggdrasil, he dismounted Sleipnir and he looked down at the world. He had brought with him his spear and a rope. He walked towards the end of the branch. Walked and walked and walked. There he slowly bound his feet with the rope and bound the other end of the rope to the branch. He took his spear in his hand, spread his arms, looked upwards to the sun, and he pierced himself. He cut himself with the spear. Blood fell down to the nine worlds. A mortal wound had been struck. With that mortal wound, one last time did he look up at the sky. And then he fell. He fell, and he fell, and he fell. And there he hanged. Of the cliffs of the void of the nine worlds he hangs and the first night that he hung there while well, he was given no meat and no bread no nothing the first night he hung there with anticipation The second night, that anticipation turned into expectance. The third night, that expectance turned into craving. The fourth night, that craving turned into anger. The fifth night, that anger turned into rage. The second night, That rage turned into emptiness. The seventh night, that emptiness turned into understanding. The eighth night, that understanding grew into acceptance. The ninth night, That acceptance turned into death. As he died, he closed his eyes. And yet before he closed them, he saw slowly shapes coming out of the void below. He cried! Grabbed the shapes, closed his eyes. When he opened them again, he stood once more on the highest branch, looking out over the noun woods. And as he stood there, he saw many things. He saw much more than he had ever done before. He had gathered the runes. 
he had grasped them. And now it was his turn to laugh. He looked at the nine worlds and he laughed at fate. Or better yet, he laughed alongside with it. For what is more hilarious than man's effort to escape his own fate? And he had now the power to pull his own strings. And thus he returned, reborn to Asgard, sat down in his throne. Laid the rules. And was never alive again. Died and reborn. We can make our own weird. By pulling its cords. Let runes fill your void. Let the dark be your torch. To live, one must pass. And in their own hearts, should they delve. Cut all their own strings. And grant the corpse to themselves. Be free of yourselves to be because your life hangs in the balance and your soul hangs in that